Well, um, today I, we're going to take time to pray over these different spots like we talked about, but um, I thought it would be helpful to speak a little bit about location. Um, if you've been a part of this church for a while, you know uh, when we first came, uh, we were the north side of Charlotte, and we had a, you kind of when you launch a church, you do preview services, so one month, and it's really more for the team to learn how to do things. So our, one of our first ones was at UNC Charlotte. Um, that became really clearly not an option. They have all these policies where it'd be really hard for us to move around, but it was nice to gather and worship. Um, then right after that, we met at Concord Mills Theater up in uh, Concord, 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 thank you. Our local uh, from here uh, will be correcting my pronunciation. And then, honestly, the south side of the city wasn't something on our radar, but we had a lot of families that were in Indian Trail, Stallings, uh, Matthews, and we were going to do a preview service down here so they could show their friends. And in the middle of that, God kind of pulled the rug up from under us north of the city, and uh, we started looking south, and we reached out to the school, and we said, hey, could we meet here every week? And uh, got to know Gina at the school, and now she's the principal there. And our preview service became kind of our pre-launch service. And for the last four years, we've been there. And if you know, we started in the auditorium. We, like, turned it around a few times. We moved to the gym because of a bigger space and uh, better classroom options. And then we got moved from the gym when they renovated the floors and moved back to the auditorium. And, and this is another move that for a lot of people we go, well, we really loved being at the school. We really felt like that was a place of worship. And there's actually stories throughout scripture uh, in Ezra is when they're rebuilding the temple. And there's an interesting part where it says that they're starting to sacrifice and they start to build the temple and they see the framework of it. And it says at the same time, there were people rejoicing and celebrating loudly simultaneously. And it actually says with the older people who had seen the glory of the former temple were mourning and wailing. And some people will say that there were like cries of joy, like, oh, this is really sweet, but I miss the old thing. Some people were like, this isn't anything like what it used to be. How, how dare we try something different? And, and for everybody, I think there's an opportunity for flexibility and grace. There's got to be for us as staff and leaders, as even we came in this week and we're doing it this morning, of how are we going to set things up? Uh, when we come back in two weeks, we'll obviously have a little bit more structure. You won't have to bring your own chairs. We'll have some stuff draped off. There'll be kids ministry. But then there's also this piece of like, what is a location? What is a place that you meet at for worship? And there's three things that I want to draw out before we start to pray to remind you and challenge you and also encourage you. The first one comes up, and you might know this scripture in 1 Peter chapter 2. It says this, as you come to him, Jesus, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ. What does this mean? Um, really simply, the church is not a place, but a people. Uh, when we used to drive by the school, uh, our kids would be like, oh, that's our church. And I would always correct them. And I'd be like, no, that's where our church meets. <laughs> and that's one of the things, too. I often say it in 704 rather than at 704. Because when you're in a family, you don't go, well, yeah, at the Finnick family. You say in the Finnick family. And there's language that helps actually identify what the church more accurately is, that it's not about a location. It's a reminder and a challenge, but also the encouragement is that this means that you, each of you individually, those of you that are safer at home and watching online, are more important and more valuable than any building or structure ever has been or ever will be. You are. That's the first thing. The church is never about a place or a location, but a people. It's you. The second one comes from John 4. I love this story. It's Jesus now going out of his way to talk to the Samaritan woman at the well. He's violating all these social guidelines of his day. 
And she says this, she says, our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. It's an old argument about two different mountains. The Samaritans believed that this is where God's presence dwelt and they built temples to worship God there. And the Jews worshiped on a different mountain. Jesus says, woman, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain where they were in Samaria nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you don't know. We worship what we do know for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come. Like he's saying it then 2000 years ago. The time is now when true worshipers will worship the Father, not at a location in particular. But in what? You know the scripture? You'll worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Meaning, it's not about worshipers that say, I'm worshiping if I'm at this spot, or if I'm worshiping if I'm at this spot. He says, God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. What is this point? Is that the church's worship is not confined to a place, but it's defined by your posture. Um, I I wonder if they had arguments in the first century about which church was better. The first Samaritan's church or the first Jewish church or whatever they might have done. Because we can easily do that. Which, which one is the better place to be? And what this is pointing at, the encouragement for you, is that your worship is not ever limited to a perfect location. Maybe you have pictures of, an, of a former church, and man, when we were there, that was the place. But men and women, worship is fueled by your heart's posture in worship. Far more than any location ever can do. So that's the first two. The church isn't a place, but a people. The church's worship isn't confined to a place, but it's defined by your posture, our posture. And the last one is in Exodus 3. It's a great story where Moses encounters the burning bush. And it's funny to think about he's just out doing his normal job. He's shepherding and going around, checking the flocks. He's out in a random wilderness area. And this is what it says, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. Good name, Jethro. The priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness. So not like from this side over there, like miles away, randomly in the wilderness. And came to Oreb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire within a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire and didn't burn up. So Moses thought, I'll go over and see this strange sight. Why this bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. That's the famous phrase throughout scripture. Here I am. I'm ready. God says, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. The last thing I want to say this morning is that the church's location is not significant because of our presence. Not because of yours or mine, but because of God's indwelling. That's the word used all throughout Scripture. That's the same word we see in John 1 when it says that Jesus made his dwelling among us. And he resides in our hearts that we aren't special because we're here. We're special because we carry God's presence. A place isn't special because we're here. A place is special because God's presence is there. And um, there's a lot on this. This is a big shift for our church amongst a lot of other things. The global pandemic, right? And as we started to worship, one of the things that has often come to mind, I heard it said a couple of years ago, is to think about the years. We were at Rock Harbor out in Costa Mesa. The years that worship had saturated the walls of that worship space. Thinking of thousands, 20, 50, 100,000 different songs sung over 20 years that just filled the wall. And as we started singing Goodness of God, It was really neat that we were acoustic because we could hear you sing. And just realizing that our worship is shifting this place. 
It's illustrated um, because oftentimes we have special places that we like to go for quiet time or to encounter God's presence, and those are all really good. It can be something like a chair in your bedroom. I have a chair that I love to do my quiet time in. It could be a bench at McDowell. There's a certain bench that I love to sit at at McDowell Nature Preserve and pray and journal and just experience God. It could be a closet. You have a prayer closet. It could be a building. But this is the encouragement for you. You being here doesn't all of a sudden make this place better. But your prayer and your worship today and every prayer and song of praise after, in, and for this place, for God's presence to radiate from the parking lot to the super cool off-limits play gym. My kids already asked if they could. The answer is no. So older adults don't get any ideas. I've thought about how long it would take me to get through there. But that it, it doesn't change because of us. It changes because of our worship and our prayer in and for this place for God's presence to radiate here at Kate's Skate and Indian Trail. That, that as we do that, it actually shifts this location from simply a family-friendly skating rink to holy ground. It's crazy to think about. And so what we want to do, it's a great plan. I love that we have this opportunity. I don't know if the rain hadn't come up this week had we have thought, man, we should go there and pray over that spot. I've prayed for this spot numerous times, but not as a collective. And for us to have this opportunity to say, hey, this is our future location for the near future. What if we realized that today when we pray for the ministries, for the different people, maybe there's a space and you go, there's something about this tile, this plank of wood, where, where chairs are going to sit, where people are going to come in, where kids are going to be ministered to and taught on their level, where worship's going to be led. That we pray that God's presence radiates for every person. Uh, one of my favorites is when we pray for the congregation. And we use the Psalm 70, verse 4. And it's this idea that every person, whether they're a faithful believer or a skeptic, when they walk in, that they would encounter God's presence. That they would experience Him. So that's what we want to release you to do. We're going to take 15, 20 minutes. George is going to have some uh, worship music playing. Um, I would encourage you uh, to practice somewhat social distancing with people that aren't in your family. We have masks on, a lot of us do. Um, the families one is over. There's a hand sanitizer station behind the wall. And if you want to know specifically, the families are going to use rooms one, three, five, and seven to kind of keep the kids spread out a little bit. We have worship and production and the preaching ministry up here. We have our groups table in the middle. We have hospitality. And then we have prayers for the congregation here. And I'd really encourage you, like I said at the beginning, if there's a specific prayer that comes up for you, maybe it's one that you read. I want to pray for this. And you go, yeah, and I'm praying for this specifically, this line in this way. Would you write it down? You don't need to put your name on it. And when we're done on our way out, we'd ask you just to drop them off at the table and we're going to record them and keep them. And so um, I'm going to ask George to put the music on. If you guys want to stay in your seat, you can, but it's good to stretch your legs a little bit and walk around. And in about 15, 20 minutes, we're going to come back. We'll have another song of worship. Um, we don't know exactly if we're going to do this or not, but I think if there's some people that have prayers that they would like to share, we would love for you to share them with everyone. Not yet, George. It's like a hook, right? Um, so let me pray for us as we do it, and then um, we'll disperse. God, we, um, it, it's crazy to think that uh, uh, your presence would be in any building. Um, but we trust that uh, you're uh, all over the earth. Uh, we believe, God, that you've led us here with uh, practical benefits and awesome opportunities not just for our church, but for the people of the 704. And God, as we pray and approach your throne in prayer, we just ask, God, would I ask right now for the people here, God, would you speak to them and give them specific prayers?
put things on their heart to pray that you would have us pray. And God, we know that you're um, God in heaven, you're king, and that you're listening to us as we approach you in prayer. I pray for the younger people that are going to try this. God, would you give them words and prayers that aren't just uh, cute but are powerful. There's no junior Holy Spirit. So God, we commit this time to you. We commit this place to you. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Well, uh, church family, we want to extend out the blessing, and uh, thank you for being here. Uh, next Sunday, we will be at the park at 9, where we're doing baptisms. Um, if you haven't found a life group, there's four different times. Um, Alpha's still going on. It sounds really like to jump in. Um, if you're curious about that, it's an awesome opportunity. A lot of ways to get connected and find community. Um, and then the following Sunday, we'll be here. The 27th will be our first official Sunday, and it will be at 10 a.m., so we'll move it back. We remember, yeah, a lot of amens on that one. Uh, we moved it back because of the heat originally in the park, so we'll be at 10. Um, but would you uh, open your hands and pray with me, and then I'll pray a blessing. Father, we uh, commit this space to you. We commit uh, each of the people that will come in uh, in two weeks, in two years, uh, however long you see fit to keep us here, God. We just uh, ask that your presence would be filled in this place, that uh, we would experience you, that we come to know you and love you more deeply, Father, and that people would know that you see them and that you know them and that you love them, God, that um, the kids would be ministered to and that they would know that you're real, God, that they would know that they can pray to you and that you hear them, love them. God, we pray for groups so that people would find community and be able to be transparent and vulnerable. I pray for our youth, I pray for Alpha, I pray for the women's groups. God, we lift up worship and production, a ministry that's actually older than any teaching biblically. We see worship from the very beginning, God. Would you make this place overflow with praise for you? God, we pray for the proclamation of your word. We pray for the truths of scripture. God, would you give us hearts that are open and receptive to that as you form in us Christ's love. And God, we pray for every person that comes to that door, that they would um, be seen. We pray for the team, that they would have spiritual eyes to see the people where they are. If they're struggling or hurt, uh, bleeding out maybe, that people would be able to see them and minister to them. And God, we thank you for this space. We thank you for this opportunity. And we ask that you bless them. Um, if you would open your hands, and I'm going to pray a blessing. It would be men and women of 704 Church, people online. May you, uh, today, know God's presence. May you experience His goodness. May in the last half hour as you pray, you realize that God knows you and speaking to you wherever you are in proximity to Him, but He actually has something to say to you. God, bless His name. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen.